fight Time to see what life takes me So I roll the dice Look up to no one else But yeah, I was shy I got real power Hebrew is a lie They got control of everything Now how do we gain back that control That we once used to have? Come together? Okay, we're going to see. We're going to answer that. Give me Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and 1. Is this a certain way that we rise up? All right? It's not by just coming together. We come together on barbecues, don't we? Right. Family reunions. What happens then? It's still arguing, fightings, quarrels. We come together at bars, brother. Sports games. It's coming together. Is that just all? Huh? It's not. Let's show you. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. It and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Right, if we listen diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God. Read on. To observe and to do all his commandments. It says what? To observe and to do all his commandments. No, just come together. To observe and to do all his commandments. So we got to come together, then observe to do all of his commandments. Read on. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. It says what? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Read on. Above all nations. Above what? Above all nations. No, below. Above all nations. Read on. Of the earth. See that? So when we come together and keep these commandments, brother, that's when we take our rulership back. That's when the Most High is going to set us on high again. But unless we keep these commandments and we keep sinning, and going off, the Lord is never going to defend us. So what's some commandments that you know? Give me Before we go to that, give me Judah 5 to 20. What's some commandments that you know so far out of the Bible? You know, no, no, no commandments. Well, guess what? Hey, our people, you, you go to church? You went to church before? The church is supposed to teach you at least one commandment. All right? At least one. There you go, brother. That's two commandments right there. Thou, thou shalt not kill. You heard that before? That's a commandment. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Right. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Right. Thou shalt keep the Sabbath day. Right. All right, keep it holy. Thou shalt have no other guys before me. Right. Thou shalt not covet. These th different commandments that's listed in the 10. We'll bring that out in Judah 5 and 12, 20. The book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Bring it out. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people. If there be what? If there, if there be, be any, any error in, in this people. people. Meaning, brother, how are we doing as a people? Are we sinless as a people? Or are we always going off? We always doing something evil, ain't we? We just doing anything. All right. So the Lord said, hey, well, AKR chief, he said, if there be any error in this people, read on. If there be any error in this people. And they sinned against their God. And they what? And they, and they sinned, sinned against, against their God. Read that again. And, and they, they sinned, sinned against, against their God. God. Read on. Let us consider that this shall be the ruin. See that? It's going to always be our ruin that we sin against our God, brother. So the thing we have to do is stop sinning. How do we stop sinning? It starts with us individually. Right. We got to get ourselves together first before we can try to get our people together right so with sin, you have to know what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is when you're breaking God's law, statutes, and commandments. So you have to put away sin. Now we're going to show you some commandments that you should be keeping according to the Bible. All right, give me the dietary law. All right. You eat pork? You eat pork? You do? You do? Pork like sausage, pepperoni. All right, read this. Leviticus 11 and verse 7. Break it out. And the swine, right. though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. What is the pig? He, he is, is unclean to you. What is swine? He, he is, is unclean, unclean to, you. to you. So swine is unclean. It's an unclean animal. We cannot be eating the pig. All right, you go down, as you go around the corner, there's some type of store over here where you could get some type of swine at. All right. Swine is an abomination in the eyes of God. Read on. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. So we can't eat swine, neither can we touch it. 
So I know you say you eat that stuff. Would you be willing to put that down for God? No, no more pepperoni pizza. No more sausage pizza. No more bacon. Now you have turkey bacon, beef bacon, lamb bacon. You have different options. Turkey pepperoni. But you cannot eat pork. Are you you think you're able to do that? Put down the pig. No more pork. You can do that. Okay, all praise to the most side. Now you eat you eat uh seafood? No seafood. Alright, give me the verse nine anyway. Verse nine. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Right. Whatsoever have fins and scales. It says what? Whatsoever have fins, fins and, and scales. scales. So the things that you, if you do decide to eat seafood, it has to have fins and scales. That would be fish. So you can eat fish, but it, if it doesn't have fins and scales, you cannot eat it. All right. You got to remember that. That makes sense. Uh, you smoke. Oh, that's good, brother. No smoke. You said what? Yeah, don't smoke neither. No cigarettes, weed, none of that. All right, you got to go. We'll get this brother a, a, fire, a starter pack. We're going to give you a fire and some information to take with you. All right. Now, you, brother, hey, we seeing you all over the city of Chicago. It's like, brother, wherever we at, you just teleport and you, you, you know what I'm saying? You come out. See, that's the spirit. That's the Lord. All right? And you don't even know. You're just walking about. Give me that in Psalms of Solomon 3 and 4. You're just walking about in the midst of the city, and you run across the servants of the Lord. Hey, that's special, brother. You know how many people want to be in the same shoes that you are right now? There's people in Arizona saying, I want to go to Chicago to watch those brothers teach. There's people in hey, London, a different countries. They say, I want to be in Chicago to hear those brothers teach. They coming up from them, Memphis, different parts of the city. And here you have it. You just regularly stumble across the service of the Lord like it's regular. Yeah, anywhere. All right. That's a blessing, brother. Give me that in Psalm Solomon, chapter 3, verse 2. It's the book of Psalms okay. of Solomon, chapter 3, and verse 2. Bring it out. I will rise now and go about the city and the streets and in the broad ways. I will seek him. I will what? I will seek him. What is this brother doing? I will seek him. You seeking him, brother. What was you doing earlier today? He was just walking around, wasn't you? See that? You say you was doing some shopping. Now you know what today is, right? What is Saturday? It's the Sabbath day, brother, so you know that. What can we do on a Sabbath day and what we cannot do? No buying or selling on the Sabbath day. It's a holy day. But that's the Lord and it's the spirit that you was just walking around. We're not even this are we not even over here. All right. We really got kicked off from where we was originally at. So we never got kicked off, brother. You probably wouldn't even ran into us. Right. All right. You probably wouldn't even have known, okay, dang, I just bought this on the Sabbath day. So everything is set up by the most high God. You was walking in the streets and you were seeking, you know, this truth. Read on. And it reads, the watchman that go about the city found me. That says what? The watchman that go about the city found me. And we found you, brother. All right. The most I made manifest to where we see you. He's like, hey, brother, we know who you is. Right. All right. We know who we, we talked to you before. Read on. They found me. In the city. To whom I said, saw ye whom I so love it. Right. And there was but a little that I passed from them. But I found them whom I so love it. And you found the right spot to be at right now. So we got to let you know, brother, as the watchman, you can't buy on the Sabbath day. All right. You have six days to do that. And those six days, you can't buy on the Sabbath. All right. Give me Nehemiah 13 and 20. Give me Nehemiah 10 and 31. No, if, hey, the Sabbath is a very, very serious day. People get killed out here, brother. For, all for breaking God's commandments. People get judged. People get hit by cars on this corner right here. All right. All for breaking the Lord's commandments. 
So as our brother, we want to make sure that you're without spot and without blemish appearing before the second coming of Yahweh Shah. All right, let's read this. Nehemiah 10. Book of Nehemiah 10 and 31. And if the people of the land prepare, or any victuals, it says or, what? Or any victuals. Meaning, if somebody is trying to get you to uh, buy something on the Sabbath day, all right, you might run into the uh, incense man. Or the man that sells the colognes. You say, hey, I got this two for 25 special, brother. All right, I got this two for 25 special. Yeah, I got that Versace. All right, that Dose and Gabbana. All you got, hey, it's special today, but it's only today, though. You're not going to have it tomorrow. They're enticing you to buy it. All right? But guess what? This is what Nehemiah said. Read on. That we were not part of them. That what? That we were not part of them. What the Lord say? That we were not part of them. Hey, Nehemiah said, hey, to hell with that, man. I'm not buying that on the Sabbath day, man. All right? I'm not buying of those victuals. Read on. On the Sabbath. Or on the holy day that we will leave the seventh year and the ex and the exaction of every day. See that? So me and Bias, I'm not buying or selling on the Sabbath or on a holy day. You have to have that same mentality, brother, by all means. Now give me Nehemiah chapter 13, 20. Nehemiah 13 and 20. Get out. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of wear large within Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them. Then I what? Then I testified against them. So Nehemiah, he was testifying against his own people. Because on a Sabbath day, these men would literally, these men would literally wait by the gates till the Sabbath day is over so they could sell and buy and get off on it. Their mind wasn't right. Their mind wasn't saying, okay, it's the holy day, all praises to the most high. Aquam Charlotte. They wasn't saying it. These men were saying, man, I can't wait till the Sabbath day. All right, they was watching the sun. So he can't wait till the sun go down so I can rip off my people. That's off. That's what I just thought with Jesus when he went to the temple. He saw everybody in that house. Then the right. He knocked everything off. Yeah, there you go, brother. That's right. All right, that's right. Read on. Read on. And said unto them, Why lie ye about the wall? If ye do so again, I will lay hands on you. It says what? I will, I will lay, lay hands, hands on, on you. you. What did Nehemiah say? I will, I will lay hands, hands on you. Hey, Nehemiah said, if I see you come around here suddenly, I'm going to lay hands on you. I mean, I'm going to beat on you. All right? And the ancient world our forefathers wasn't playing around. So, brother, if you was, if you just bought that, and Nehemiah was right there, brother. Your rib cake, you might, you might have, you might, your tooth might have been knocked out. All right? All right? You might have got your chest caved in. All right? And righteousness. Right. Yeah, the wind, you know, he might just came around the corner and just knocked you out, brother. All right. Well, that was in the ancient world. Now it's grace and mercy. Now you can repent. Can it, you would have been stoned. So you want to have that same mentality with Hamashiach from like Yahweh Shah. Hey, man, if the Lord catch me around here two or three times, the Lord is going to lay hands on me. The Lord can literally take his fear from you, brother. So... You don't want to be buying on this uh, on the Shabbat. Read on. It's more than that. Reading on. From the from that time forth came they no, no more. It says what? From that time forth came they no more. And hey, they were scared of Nehemiah. They said, oh snap, Nehemiah out there. He wasn't a little dude. All right. Like we always say, hey, he was probably six, you know, six five, two twenty. All right, pure muscle. Right. They were scared of him. They wouldn't even come around. So they knew what time it was. All right, you said what? Yeah, on the Sabbath day. Read that again. Uh, from that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. See that? They ain't come back ever again on the Sabbath. So, brother, what are you going to do in the future and this is Sabbath day? Are you going to buy on it and shop? Man. Nah. Man, I, I have a, a this do it on Saturdays before and I got used to it so much. And yeah, I'll tell you the truth. I use it so much. Right. Well, all right, brother, you got to remind yourself. That's why you're supposed to have your fringes on. Right. To remind yourself, oh, snap, it's the Sabbath day I came by. Right. All right. So, so going forward, no more buying on the Sabbath day. You want to get that in your head. All right, I cannot buy on the Sabbath day. All right, you really shouldn't even be out here 
unless you come in to get the word. Because right, right. there's a lot of enticement out here, man. All right, people selling drugs, loose cigarettes. All right, people gonna try to entice you to buy stuff. All right, you got all type of demons out here. So you got all type of demons out here. You got food that smells good. Next thing you know, you getting enticed. Right. Bye, Popeye is tricky, brother. So you don't want to be out here just walking around on the Lord's holy day. It's a day of rest, brother. All right. You want to exact from all of your labors. That makes sense. So are you going to buy on the Sabbath day again? You're not, right? Well, why, why can't you buy in six days? Why can't you buy before Friday when the sun goes down? Working. You work? Yeah. What time you get off? Late. What about Sunday? Sometimes on Sundays, but not all the time. I be, be tired by the time like, I be tired and I don't feel like moving on Sundays. So. Well, brother, that's how you got to be on Saturdays. Right. You got to be tired, resting, right. not feel like moving around. Sunday come, but you got to do what you got to do. Monday come, but when that Shabbat comes in, Hey, it's wraps. Give me that. Uh, give me Second Maccabees. All right, six and eleven. The Lord's holy day. All right, the most holy day. The book of Second Maccabees, chapter six, and verse number eleven, and others that have run together into the caves nearby to keep the seventh day sacredly. Right. Being discovered by Philip, were all run together because they made a conscience to help themselves. For the honor of the most sacred day. It says what? For the honor of the most sacred day. What is the Sabbath day? For the honor of the most sacred day. So what is the Sabbath day, brother? Saturday, which is the most sacred day. That's the right. most sacred day, brother. Right. So you got to take that day with seriousness. All right? Yeah. It's nothing to play around with. It's the Lord's yeah. most sacred day. It supersedes the Feast of Tabernacles. All right? It supersedes the new moon. It's the literally the most sacred day. And it supersedes the Passover, man. And that's a high holy day. That's how serious the Sabbath day is. So again, you can't be buying no more on the Sabbath day. All right. That makes sense. All right. You got where are you about to go, brother? You said what? Lake front. All right, brother. All right. Stay in the spirit. See that? Jake, man. Hey brother, hey, hey, brother, come hear the word. Come hear the word, brother. You said what? You believe in the Bible? You do? What's your nationality, according to the Bible? You said what? That's, that's a religion. What's your race? You black? You the color of your pants? Exactly. So why you call yourself black? Right. But that's why we got to start going to what God called us, brother. You special. You're more special than black. Black is just a color out of a crayon box. Right. God made all of us, but he made us diverse. Everybody is different. We're, it's certain nations that's different from other nations. So every every nation is not the same. We telling you that you telling you that you come from a holy nation, the Israelites, the people in His Son. All right. No, that's what the Bible says. All right, give me the shotgun. Second Edges, chapter six, and verse number four. Get out. And it reads thus. Slug. For we all have second Edge chapter six and verse number fifty four. Bring it out. And after these, Adam also, whom thou made his Lord of all thy creatures. Right, you know about Adam, right? All right, you know you know who Adam is, Adam. Yeah, Adam was the first person on the, uh, was uh, the chosen Adam. All right, he was on the earth. Read on. Of him come we all. Of what? Of, of him come we all. Read that again. Of him come we all. Everybody on the. And the earth comes from Adam, correct? Read on. 
and the people also. And the what? And the people also. Read on. Whom thou hast chosen. So out of that chosen bloodline from Adam, you have a chosen people, which was the Israelites. All right. Chiefly from Methuselah all the way down from Enoch on the right hand side. All right. All the way to Noah. You have uh, Shem. All right. You got our facts at Halog, Terah. From Abraham all the way down to uh, Isaac and Jacob. Right. That's where you get the Israelites from. Break it down. Read on. Read on. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. Right. As for the other people. As for the what? As for the other people. The other people is the people that's not on his sign. Those are what you call the heathens, the other nations. Those are our enemies. If you're not on it, so they're nothing, brother. But you're something because you're special. You're an Israelite. That's right. You're not a black person. Right. You got to get that at your head, brother. You're not black. You're not American black. Right. You're not African American. Right. You're not a Negro. You're an Israelite, God's chosen people. And in the last days, you have to start conducting yourself as a king, as an Israelite. Because this place is, America is going to be destroyed. All right. World War three is going to happen. Right. A civil war is going to happen in America. Right. All right. Every nation is going to be for themselves. You have to make sure that you're right in the eyes of God. So when the Lord comes back, that you could be saved. A lot of people are going to be destroyed, brother. A lot of people that are going to think they're going to get salvation. But the Lord is going to say that apart from me, I never you. I never knew you. Ye that work and ye the workers of iniquity. Right. But we want you to be that one brother. That's going to repent and keep the commandments. You think you're able to do that? You can work on it. What if the world was to end tomorrow? You still going to work on it? So, I mean, but, but you, wouldn't you do everything in your power right now? What about y'all, sisters? Let's say the world was to end tomorrow. And you have one opportunity to get right with God. Are you going to try and think about it and maybe, or are you going to hey, make haste? Which one? Y'all going to make right. haste. Right. So, brother, you got to make haste, brother. Right. Give me Psalms 119, all right? Verse 6. You got to make haste, brother. Because the time that you think you, you don't really have the time that you think you have. Right. At any given time, hey, you could be out this earth. All right? Bring this out. Psalms 119 and verse 60. Bring it out. I made haste. What did David say? I, I made, made haste. haste. Read on. And right. delay not to keep thy commandments. So that's what we got to do. Right. We got to make haste to keep the commandments. Right. We can't tarry. We can't say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that next week. All right. I'm going to start reading my Bible tomorrow. I'm going to start reading my Bible when I turn 25. When I turn 30. That's off. All right. You got a precept? Sarah, right, chapter 5 and verse 7 of the GNT. Bring it out. Come back to the Lord quickly. Don't think that you can keep putting it off. His anger can come upon you suddenly, and you will die under his punishment. And you what? And you, you will, will die, die under, under his, his punishment. punishment. See that? You could die under his punishment. Y'all don't want to die, do y'all? Y'all want to be preserved, right? We got to start keeping his laws. All right? So, brother, get a fire, all right, before you leave. Now, y'all know some uh, commandments uh, by God? Uh, some of God's commandments. Y'all been to church? Yeah, what have y'all learned in the church? Nothing. See? That's why y'all should, should stop going to them churches. I mean, if y'all ain't learning, then what's the point of being in there? The church is not going to teach y'all what y'all need to know. All right, what they do in the church? Sing, dance. See that they talking about people. All right, that's what they do. They call them. They somebody for somehow they they get the drop on somebody information. They find out what's going on, and they start pointing. They they talk about people, but without talking about people. All right, yeah, uh, you can't be. Let's say y'all disrespecting y'all mom. The pastor he gonna make the whole sermon on on, on being obedient to your parents. All right. All right. If somebody, yeah, with no precepts, somebody committed adultery, 
and he finds out he's going to make the whole service about adultery. Right. Whole time he's doing it. Right. So y'all want to come out of those churches because the churches is not giving y'all the truth. Right. But y'all pay tithes and offerings. Y'all be putting in there. What did, what did God say? Well, how much you put in there? What if he asked for 50 or put it in a? See that? What about a hundred? Right. <laughs> now, okay. Where in the Bible or where did God ever say, give me $50? Nowhere. So why are y'all letting the pastors lie to y'all and say, give me y'all money? Y'all really know what you're doing with that money, right? Paying his bills. He's getting a new Mercedes Benz. Right. All right, AMG Coop with the top low. He's spending that money after service. He's going to Golden Corral. Right. All right. He, he yeah, he going to the club, baby. So it's important that y'all start doing research for yourselves. Give me the book of Acts seventeen and eleven. Y'all gotta go. Y'all Uber. All right. Well, y'all got the uh, information on there, so look into that. All right. Are you too? The book of Acts, chapter 17, and verse number 11. Get out. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Right. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. And what? And searched the scriptures daily. What do our people got to do? And search the scriptures daily. We doing? Whether those things were so. And that's what our people got to start doing, man. Right. Stop letting people just tell you anything. Right. Stop going with just what people say. Stop just going with the flow. All right, you just in the in the survey, just going with the flow. Hey, since you got a couple minutes for the word, are right, you an Israelite? You got to repent, keep the commandments. All right, you just a lot of Israelites they just going with the flow. All right, the pastor is saying if you don't put in two hundred dollars in the collection plate, you're going to hell. All right, and a lot of people in the crowd just saying, "Amen, amen, amen." Preach, pastor. Preach, pastor. All right, that's off. We're not saying preach pastor. Where's, what verse is that? Right. The pastor, he just saying stuff. He's not quoting no precepts. They just say, yeah, go ahead. Talk to him. Talk to him. That's off. Amen. Right? Hey, hallelujah. All right? We're not doing that up here, man. If it's not thus said the Lord, guess what? Hey, we're not hearkening to it. All right. We're not believing it. If you don't have no type of sources with precepts pulled up, you just, we're going to think you're automatically lying. All right, now give me side right, 18 to 27. All right, I want to touch on with the brother, you know, shopping on the Sabbath. Correct, chapter 18 and verse 27. No. A wise man will fear in everything. It says what? A wise man will fear in everything. And like we said, we see that brother everywhere, man. All right, we did, we probably seen him at 53rd, right. seen him at the beam multiple times. Right. All right, just, we probably was getting something to eat, we seen him walking. So the Lord said a wise man will fear in everything. If you get in that spirit that's telling you to do something and you know it's off, you got to say, hold on. You got to go back to the precepts. You got to say, hold on. I don't. I know this is off, but hey, the Lord said, I'm scared to do this. All right. You call the brother out. Hey, is this a wise decision to make? That's what a wise man is going to do. But you got certain men. They just go with the go with Satan's counsel. Saying, say, yeah, you know, it's the Sabbath day, but I need you to buy this. All right. And you hearken in the saying, you know, it's wrong. And they should know you bought on the Shabbat. Man. All right. Saints tell you, yeah, stay at home, man. Just try to fake a sickness. Don't go to camp. All right. Brother saying, yeah, I got the uh, sniffles. All right. They're not coming to camp, man. So Satan's going to always try to put that do it spirit on you and try to peer pressure you. But you gotta, you gotta say, hold on, I can't do this, man. I'm scared. Right. I'm scared of the judgment of the Lord. I'm scared of what the most I could do. Give me that in uh, First Chronicles, chapter 21, 16. Hey, David was scared to pass over because the sword of the angel of the Lord. All right. And David was a mighty man. Right. So read this. First Chronicles, 21 and 16. Read it out. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth. In the heaven, right? Having a drawn sword in his hand. Having a what? Having a drawn sword in his hand. Read one. Stretched out over Jerusalem. 
Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. And David said unto God, Is it not I that I commanded the people to be numbered? Even I, it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Right. And David seen an angel in a uh, stand between the heaven and the earth, man, with a sword drawn in his hand. All right. And that was chiefly for judgment for numbering the Israelites. David knew in his mind that he couldn't number the Israelites. All right. He knew that that was impossible. You can't do it. But yet Satan provoked him and tempted him. And he followed his own counsel. And he certain men, they literally scared to not go an hour. They, they can't go an hour without praying. They don't get that prayer up every hour. Hey, they scared they might fall out of the truth. Why another brother is just saying, I mean, that's just one prayer. All right. An hour won't hurt. I'll be all right. Let me hit these uh, pull-ups. That's all. All right, certain men they literally they can't st they can't stop fasting. Right. They don't fast for one time, and they think the most high is just gonna take the spirit out of them. All right. All right, so this it's a difference between a man that really fears the Lord, somebody that's walking without the fear of the Lord. So read on on that. Well, he was afraid right? because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. See that so he was afraid of the judgment of the most high. That's how you got to be. You got to be scared of the Lord's judgments. Right. You got to be terrified, all right? You got to be scared out of your soul. Because if not, you're going to walk around loosely and you're going to be sinning. You're going to be adding sin upon sin and the most high is going to recompense you according to your works. Right. So read on in that, Sirach 18. Sirach chapter 18 and verse 27. And give me Psalms chapter 86 and 11. A wise man will fear in everything. It says what? A wise man will fear in everything. So when you're walking in the truth, you literally have to fear in everything. To the words that you say, to how you walk, how you conduct yourself, how you act, you have to literally be walking on eggshells. Because right. if you're not, again, you're going to do some presumptuously. You're going to walk into your own ways, walk into your own eyes, then you're going to be destroyed. All right, just like that one Jake on the corner, he said, hey, you can't, they can't tell me nothing. Right. We ain't even say nothing to the brother. Yeah. We ain't even say, brother, come hear the word. All right, you know who you, what's your nationality? You know who you are. He just looked and said, "Y'all, them n words can't tell me nothing." See, men like that, they're gonna be cut down. All right, so read on. It says, "And in the day of sinning, he will be, he will be aware of his offense." Right. But a fool. But a what? But a fool. Read that again. But a fool. What the Lord say? But a fool. Read. But not observe time. The fool is not gonna observe the time. The fool is not going to be prepared. All right. The fool is going to be getting off work. The sun is going to go down. It's going to be the new moon. He know he has to get gas. But a fool is going to say, hey, I ain't really worried. I'm going to just take my time. All right. I'm going to be patient. Didn't the Lord say be patient? Come on, come on, come on. You be patient. The sun is down. You buy gas on a new moon. You on the expressway. And the most I just stop your tires, man. And you flip. And you bust his skull open. All right? That's what a fool, that's what happens to a fool. Right. Because you're not aware, you stuck in sin, you're not going to be aware of your surroundings. You're not going to be aware of these different demons that might try to tempt you. A fool is not going to be, he's not going to be observing the time because he's calling his foolishness. All right? Read on. Read on. It says, every man of understanding Knoweth wisdom and will give praise unto him that found it. That's it on that. The point is, you want to make sure you're fearing in everything. Right. It's better to be on the safe side than to be not safe at all. Right. All right. Certain brothers, like, I don't, is this pork? All right. They're trying to look it up. They don't know the full, you know, evidence on it. They say, you know what? I'm just not even going to leave it alone. A lot of brothers just going, well, I don't see nothing. Let me just eat this. Next thing you know, it got some type of uh, uncleanness in it. So you want to always make sure you want the same side in the truth, man. Huh? All right. Now give me Psalms 86 and 11. Psalms 86 and 11. Bring it out. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Right. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. It says what? Unite, Unite my, my heart, heart to fear, fear thy, name. thy name. What did David say? Unite my heart to fear thy name. Right. 
You gotta ask the most side to unite, you know I'm saying, your heart to fear his name. When you pray, ask the Lord to give you the fear of the Lord, man. Ask the most side to put that fear and that dread upon you so you can make proper decisions. Because if not, you're gonna be like Nabal. All right, he made a presumptuous decision. He didn't fear the Lord. He did what he wanted to do. And the Lord cut him down, man. He gave his wife to another man that was better than him. So read that again. Psalm 86 and 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Right. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. And I will glorify thy name forevermore. That's it on that. You want to ask the Lord to unite his heart to fear your name. I was, what's going on, King? You believe in the scriptures, the Bible? You do? Why are you saying it like that, brother? You say you yeah, I do. You do you? Yeah. Have you read it? What have so from you reading the Bible, what have you learned? What what is the moral of the why was the Bible even created? What's the whole purpose of it? Show you how to live your life. Who to live their life? Anybody? 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 You sure? Who is this? The who is this Bible directed to? Do you know? Anybody? It don't matter. Give me Psalms one forty-seven and nineteen. Let's, let's find out if anybody could just pick up this book. All right, read this. Book of Psalms, chapter one forty-seven. Verse 19. Bring it out. He showed his word unto Jacob. It says what? He showed his word unto Jacob. No, everybody. He showed his word unto Jacob. Now, do you know who Jacob is? Jacob, in a certain context, is Jacob can mean the Israelites. All right? Because Jacob is the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel. So God showed his word unto Jacob. It didn't say everybody. Read on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Unto who? Unto Israel. Read that again. Unto Israel. Read on. He have not dealt so with any nation. He have not what? He have not dealt so with any nation. Read on. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise the how. See that? So God said, hey, I didn't show my word to everybody. I didn't give these rules to how to live to just anybody. Okay. I gave them, he gave them to his people. But it, it, it starts with his people, but then it goes out with everybody else. Where do we say that at? Uh, you can go to Genesis 28 chapter. Genesis 28? Yeah, Genesis 28. All right, let's go to it. All right. Let's go to Genesis 28. Uh, go up to verse, uh, let's say 13. 13? All right, read that. In Genesis 28 and verse 13. Bring it out. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham. Thy father and the God of Isaac, the land where all thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Let's, let's keep reading. Keep reading. All and right. thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, all right. and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. Hold on, read that part again. No, no, no. Yeah, you got that part, but I want to read the next verse too. So, is that your point? I'm, I'm going to make two points. All right, for sure. For sure. And and in thee, and in mm -hmm. thy seed, right. shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Right. So, so this blessing that you're talking about, yeah, you know, I agree with you. It's starting with Jacob. It started with Jacob and his family. He got the word, but guess what? It's going to bless all families of the earth. What does that Every mean? Family on earth. That mean, that mean that this revelation that Jacob got, this understanding that Jacob got, is going to go forth to everybody. Now, if you go to Isaiah 2, 2, and 3, he tells you one day everybody, every nation, right, will have to come up to the mountain and learn God's way. Now, hold on. Now, that's dealing with the kingdom connotation. That's that's talking about in the kingdom of heaven when that will happen. Yeah, it is. We're going to show you that, but I want to tackle your first I want to tackle your first point. I want to answer that first point first. Now, give me Genesis chapter 12 and give me verse 3. Now, the reason why it says out of all families, all right, give me Amos chapter 3. Give me verse 1. And give me the book of James chapter 1 and 1. Because the Israelites were scattered into all families of the earth. Every nation they were scattered into as a curse. So that's not talking about 
every literally every of uh, the other nations, the heathens. We're going to prove that. We're going to show you that. Genesis 12, 3. The book of Genesis, chapter 12 and verse 3. You know? And I will bless them that bless thee. Right, guys? I'm going to bless them that bless thee. Read on. And curse them that curse thee. And what? And curse them that curse thee. Now, did the other nations as a people bless us or curse us, brother? I said, did the other nations bless us as a people or they cursed us? I don't know. They cursed us, brother. But every nation cursed us. Yes. Every nation had us in slavery. Did you know that? I didn't know. Every nation had the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American in captivity. Right. To the Babylonians, which are the Ethiopians. Right. To the Arabs. To the so-called white man. Right. To the Chinese man. Right. To the Africans, which were the Egyptians. I mean, many different nations had us in captivity. The Lord said in 1 Maccabees 2 and 10, what nation have had not a part in her kingdom? So if it's that all families of the earth is going to be blessed, how is that when they have cursed us? The Lord just said he's going to curse them that curse uh, us. Didn't Baalim curse us in the book of Numbers, chapter 22? So that's why I'm saying you got to know what it's talking about. Give me Now give me uh, Amos 3 and 1. Book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Bring it out. If this word that the Lord has spoken against you Oh, children of Israel. Oh, what? Oh, children, children of Israel. Israel. Again, the children of Israel. Read on. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known. You what? You, you only, only have, have I known. known. Read that again. You, you only, only have, have I known. known. You only have I known. Read on. Of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. Right? So why would God say he's going to bless all the families of the earth? But then in Amos, he say, you the only one have I known of all the families of the earth. Right. Okay. All right, I'm going to show you. Oh, can you answer that before we move on? First off, first off, it, start, it started with Jacob, right? Right. Yeah, it started with Jacob. But what happened was there was times in Sorry. the Bible where people that wasn't of the nationality of uh, Israel or whatever. Right. They was drafted in. I'll give you a perfect example. Yeah, you got to prove that. Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute in Jericho. Right. Because of what she did, they allowed her to come in to the fold. You got to prove that. In. What verse? All right. Rahab coming into the fold. I want to see that. I want to see that. Because, you know, you might see some, you know, I, you might, I might have missed that part. And I might have read the book of Joshua. I might have said, dang, I, 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 I ain't see it, you know. So I, I, you know, you gotta. The Lord said, "Prove all things." I can't solve it. I can't solve it. I can't solve it. Um, no, you, all right, all right, all right. So Rahab, Rahab, Rahab came in, but she was there. Um, was she in the fold though? Yeah, you got Rahab, Ruth. All right, King David came. Um, and then I give you one, Cornelius in the New Testament. Right. Okay. What nationality was Cornelius? He was Roman. Let's was go. Roman. To, are you sure? Yeah. He was. Give me Acts chapter ten and one. That's why I'm at right now. Let's do it. Chapter 10 and verse 1. You know? And give me First Maccabees, chapter 10. Give me verse 36. And give me Psalms, chapter 112. Give me verse 1. And give me Acts, chapter 22. And give me verse 12. It says, Acts 10 and 1. There was a certain man of the Caesarea, it's like, uh, it's Caesarea, called Cornelius. A centurion. A what? A centurion. Read on. Of the band called the Italian band. Now, he was a centurion. A centurion is a captain, like or a leader okay. of the wrong of the Italian band, meaning he was over them. Okay. But did you know it was different nations, not just the Romans that was in a Rome uh, in an Italian band. You have many different nations. You had Jews that was actually in the Italian band. Right. Okay. We're gonna prove that. Give me First Maccabees, chapter ten. So what nationality is he? He was an Israelite, and we can prove that. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Because you had Israelites that was Hellenized during the Greek captivity. When you do you know about the Greek Empire? No, no, no. Listen to me. Listen to me. No, he was, he was, I'm gonna I'm show you how I know he was an Israelite. Well, hold on. We we finna show you that he was. But right. but I want to say this because this is history. This is actual facts. Right, right. Do you know about the Hellenization period? Yeah, I know about that. So the Greeks came over. Do you know what land they they overtook? Yeah. Judea. They overtook Judea. Exactly, and, a, and he considered a, a lot of Israelites literally 
got converted to his religion, they put away the laws of God to follow the laws of the Greeks. Right. Now, now, I do agree with that. Now, that didn't just stop. That still carried on during the Roman Empire. That's why when you read the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul said there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. Why is he saying the Greek and they're in during the time of the Roman Empire? I thought the Greek Empire was over with. Because you still had Israelites that was Hellenized during the time of Rome. You had Greek speaking Jews during the time of Rome. Now, now, now. Here's the point. The point when you go to uh, Acts 10 chapter, regardless of what nationality you do. No, it matters. No, it matters. It matters. He was a Gentile. Okay. He was a Gentile. But what's the definition so, of a Gentile? Let's be let's keep it a book. Well, he, well, if he's a Gentile, according to what you're saying, he was not Israelite. You have two different types of Gentiles. Do you know how many types of Gentiles there are? Let, we gonna, I ain't gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you with proof. Let's get this honor band. Before we get that, give me first Maccabees 10 first. 36. First Maccabees chapter 10 and 36. I will further that there be enrolled among the king's forces. Amongst the what? Amongst the king's forces. Right. About 30,000 men of the Jews. About what? About 30,000 men of the Jews. Read on. Unto whom pay shall be given as belonged to all the king's forces. So why did you have 30,000 men of the Jews in the king's forces during the time of the Greeks in the Roman Empire? That's, be, that's because it's just like the American military. Is it only just white people in the military? Is you have mercenaries. All right. Mercenaries is different men from different nations that help to fight in the army. You have the Cherethites and Parathites. So just because it's a kingdom set up, that don't mean that other races cannot fight in that king's army. They're going to draft anybody. My point is... Although Cornelius was a centurion, that doesn't just mean he was a Roman just because he was over the Italian band. Okay, so let me, let me get the ideology right. If that made sense. What are you saying as far as salvation? Like you said, are you saying only black people can be saved? Are we we just going to get straight to the point. Only the Israelites could be saved. Right. All right, that's so the more. It don't matter if you're white, black, purple, or blue. It's not a. Exactly. It don't matter about skin color. You have to descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to get salvation. Okay. If you don't okay. descend, yeah, I can agree with that. Well, you I'm agree with that? What I'm saying is now, now we gonna go to a higher level. Okay. Um, okay. Well, okay. he didn't name them Israelites. Though. What do you mean he didn't name them Israelites? Israelites is an English name. It's Yasher Allah in the Hebrew. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Israelite is English. Right. Matter of fact. So if you're telling me that God is a Hebrew, right? He got all this Hebrew stuff. Right. According to Exodus 3 18, and he couldn't have gave his people an English name. What does Yasha Allah mean? Do you know what that means? Yasha Allah? Yes. No, is that an English word? No, that's a Hebrew word. It means Israel. All right. What's your proof? What do you mean? All right, let's, let's go into the Hebrew. Because you know why? You know why? That. You know why? You know why? Because I'm going to ask you this. I actually you know the sound of that. Going to the Hebrew, so you have no. This is the no. You can't say this is can't. We can't. This is the Lajuan Kadash. I'm gonna tell you where that came from. Where did it come from? That came from a guy's dream. Wow. That came from a guy's dream. There's no. Look, That's crazy. There's no. There's no. Look, I'm gonna tell you like this. There's no. What is what is his name? Got his name, but the thing is, there's no. There's no factual evidence that shows that that that's the correct. Litigation of the of that paleo of that ancient. We finna show you. Let's pull up the Moabite stone. The Moabite stone. Now, do you know about the Moabite stone? This is archaeology. You believe in archaeology? You know about the stone? Absolutely. Okay. Now, are we got it right here? Now, now I'm gonna oh, tell you, hold on. I'm gonna tell you, no, I'm gonna tell you what no, hold on. Can I finish my point? Now I got you. Because you said you said that's that was a man's dream. You don't for one, you don't even know the man's name. So we can't say what when this man was born, none of that. For two, I'm pretty sure this dates back. What's the this the lost known as Degaston? This dates back before the so-called man's dream. Now, as you look at this, 
as you look at this, it's the same characters that's in the Hebrew alphabet. Mm, break it down. Now, so can you explain that? Why is this the same? Why is this the Ten Commandments in the Hebrew? And it matches the alphabet. I'm explaining. The problem, the problem when you come to trans litigation of that, of that writing style or that language is that this. They didn't have no vowels. They carried them in their head. So when you see that language, you think, man, they didn't have no vowels, right? So what you say is you associate, you say then, oh, well, it's an ah sound after they read. No, they carried the vowels in their head. You don't have, they didn't write you, them down. what now, proof is now, that? I'll show you. I'll show you. In the Dead Sea Scrolls. I just don't have it on me. Well, now, hold on. Another thing is, you, of course, you're not going to have the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's another, ancient manuscripts. Right, right. Another thing is that also, uh, you got to. 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 You got what we call the Metaritic scribes. You say that the, the, the whole premise of this is that the Metaritic scribes were wrong. I'm not saying no, that. But that's what he said. The, the Masoretic text was written in what? This is this same alphabet. Yeah, but they misconjugated the vowels. That's How? It's no vowels to even misconjugate. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They didn't write them down, but they carried them. It, no, it's no vowels to begin with at all. Vowels came through the English language. No, no, right. No, 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 no. Every language got vowel sound. How does every language got vowel sounds? Hebrew is a language that don't have vowel sounds. No, 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 no. Can you answer that? You, it has vowel sounds. You just, they, where's they the, write them down. Where's the vowel sounds write, in this, brother? They didn't write them down. Ah, uh, ba, no, no, da, no, no, da, ha, wa, za, ka, ta, ya, ka, la, ma, na, a, sa, wa, pa, ta, za, kwa, ra, sha, ta. Where's the vowels in that? Where's the vowels, brother? Where they they carried them in their head. That's why oh, when you see it, we gotta prove that. We gotta, we gotta prove, prove that. that. Uh, okay. We gotta prove that. Is there vowel sounds in modern Hebrew? What is modern Hebrew? You talking so about call, Yiddish? We call, what we call the Assyrian blocks now. Hebrew. The Hebrew that you going to this right here. That's modern Hebrew right here. Is there vowel sounds in that? The Yiddish. Now, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean. I didn't mean. Oh, there you are, brother. So that, those are vowel sounds. There's vowel sounds in that. What they did was when they transliterated. They say, you know what? The people, the language is too complicated because people don't understand that we carry the vowel sounds in our head. So that's what they did. They wrote them down. You gotta, you gotta prove that. Until you prove that, we that's not that's incorrect. Okay. We got some more. Okay. We got some more proof for you. Though. Read this. Okay. I, I, got so you I came up, up in the middle of this conversation. This is a, a native language. Dream. It says the <laughs> earliest Phoenician inscription probably dates from the 11th century. From the what? From the 11th century. Read one. BCE. The latest inscription from from Phoenician. Proper is from the first country, BCE, when the language was already super, uh, super, 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 super by Aramaic. In addition to being used in Phoenicia, the language spread of many of its colonies. We go to images is the same as the paleo. So you can't say a man made that in his dream when it's been before the 11th century BCE. So then you got to take that point back. Yeah, you got to take that. Do you take that point back? Do you take that point back first? Okay, I'll take it back. All right, brother. All right. What I'm saying is this. There's a misconjugation. That's why. Okay, I got an idea. Okay. What is your, what is your, uh, what is your, what is your understanding on the vowel sounds as it pertains to what you want to, as far as, like, for example, when should I not ask the vowels or when it's all constant? Brother, there's no vows. I'm right. telling you, it's no vows at all. That's See, what that's I'm saying. What, that's what we because a it's, language has vows. Brother, what? Can you name me a vowel in here, please? A language has vows. I, I'm saying, this is the you language. But you, even though you don't see it. Brother, like listen, listen, face. listen. You can see it just like I can see it, right? right, right, right. This is the yeah. alphabet of the Paleo okay, Hebrew. Okay, okay, okay. I need, I need Show me the vowel. Point out the vowel of the sound. It give you the sounds right there from the ah all the way to the tha. Show me where the yeah. vowel is. A vowel is A E I or U, correct? It's A E I or U, correct? Show me where A E I or U is anywhere in this alphabet. We'll pack up and leave. Okay. Okay, look. How about we just say, fuck all this shit? 
That's whoop all these young niggas ass. Nah, but brother, he's going brother, brother, he brother, 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 br
to make with the children of Israel. To what? To make with the children of Israel. No, everybody. To make with the children of Israel. And the Lord only made his, these commandments, this covenant with the children of Israel. But guess what the children of Israel said? We don't want it, man. All right? We don't give a damn about it. We're not going to walk therein. Read that in Jeremiah 66.